What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Collider Interview Studio at Sundance 2024. I am lucky enough to be sitting with the team behind the American Society of Magical Negroes. Congratulations on your movie. Thank you very much. Thank you. So before we even start our conversation, I must give an extra special shout out to Filmio, our sponsor at Sundance this year. They're allowing us to be here to support independent filmmakers. Filmio is also a special company because they are breaking barriers by putting the power to greenlight films in the hands of fans and creators. If you want to learn more about Filmio and their community, check out their website, film.io. Kobe, you're getting my first question. Again, I told you this before, ambitious script right here. What was the first idea, the core idea that started it all? But then I also want to know if you had a break story moment, something that made you think like this high concept will be a full feature film. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, I started this project with just the premise of um, a magical Negro society, right? And when I first started working on it, I thought it was going to be a much shorter piece. I didn't think it was going to be a feature because most high concept comedic ideas should be about two minutes long, generously, you know. And uh, in terms of a, a break story moment, I it came really early when I realized I was writing about something much bigger, um, that I wasn't just um, critiquing this particular toxic film trope, but I was really writing about my own experience uh, growing up as a black person in America and writing about defense mechanisms that I had been taught to respond to to, to racism. And um, the film ended up being a, a space for me to process that and um, hopefully help other people do the same. So I'm sure you go into filming with a, a rock solid script, but I love hearing about how films can evolve every single step of the way. So what would you say is the biggest difference between draft one of this screenplay and what everyone will now see in the finished feature? Oh gosh, I mean, um, yeah, do you, you get it? Protagonist's name changed. <laughs> Um, this is still cut my this. song. <laughs> what was yeah. the name? That happened. The name was Omar originally. That was your name? Yeah, Omar. Oh, shit. Um, and wait, was that the name? It was. It wasn't the original. Draft. But then, what was the joke of like the switch? There's there was this. A, there was oh, a gosh. cut. There's a cut joke uh, that was a wordplay joke on the old name. And I think one of your biggest concerns when we changed the name was that that wordplay joke wasn't going to work. I know. And we found it, a new one. We we solved we, it. We found yeah. a new what one, but the then joke? they both then got we, cut. Then we cut the, we cut the yeah. scene anyway. So what so, was the old yeah. joke? The joke was oh, someone didn't understand. What was my, the old joke? I'm explaining. Kobe, <laughs> Kobe the director. <laughs> let, let me just say this: it was cut for a reason. You know. Just tell us. Yeah. All right. Here's a joke that didn't make the film. Uh, uh, no, no. I, I mean, there are a million. What little was things. the joke, <laughs> David? Uh, hold on. No, there, there are a This is a journalistic that, tactic. But it's one of those jokes. You that, repeat the question until it's answered. I will what never do this. So I'm joke? glad you're doing it for me. What was the joke? <laughs> it's not a funny joke to recount. It's, it's like really, it's, it's really only not. funny it was, in context. It, it was quite funny in the scene. It did, it doesn't work so. here. Uh. Boy. <laughs> you should do stand up. Really. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think in some ways the biggest change from from the script to to the finished film is just the all of the texture that that the individual actors bring to it, you know. And I I, I try to be very collaborative, um, um, in part because um, it's just it's my sensibility, but but also uh, because you know when you're working with with artists of this caliber, they really do have you know meaningful full stuff to contribute, and sometimes that's literal language. Oh, I, I you know I feel like my character might say this instead of that, but but other times. It's it's just it's just texture, you know, where you know, um, you know, the, the 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 way the integrity that David brings to the society sort of tells all the other actors, oh, okay, this is how we're approaching this, you know, uh, where the seriousness of purpose justice brings to it tells other actors that it's like, oh, this is not broad. This is we're playing it in this pocket over here, and so um, that stuff really helps helps refine it. I remember specifically uh, Kobe and I had because I I. I... I wouldn't say signed on to this, but I, I became a part of this at the Sundance Labs. Um, Kobe invited me to workshop the script with him, um, and not as a writer, but like as an actor. And I remember uh, the biggest issue for me with the character was his relationship to magic. Like this thing, this like, uh, you know, the realization that magic exists, you know, I, in order for our audience to be connected to this protagonist, like he has to have some reckoning with like, this supernatural thing actually exists before we get into the, like the larger metaphor and the journey of the character. So I, I know that we were like really playing around with that, how astonished he is, how taken aback, how, how much, like, uh, how, how much, uh, how in denial he is that this is real, you know, um, that was important to pepper in, um, but still driving the narrative. So like people didn't like, we didn't harp on this thing as like, you know, cause we don't want to see a character like 
all, the whole movie would just be like, oh my god, magic is real, you know, because everyone's just like, get over it. Well, it, it's one of those, it's one of those really great collaborations, I think, between the different chairs we sit in. Whereas a filmmaker, you know, it's so easy to be like, everyone knows it's a magical premise, it's a secret society. We accept it pretty quickly. We don't need to spend a lot of time adjusting to that reality because everybody knows that premise walking in. But then as an actor, Justice's point is like, this is insane. Yeah. I've been sucked into a magic <laughs> yeah. society. Can we like take a minute and respect that? Yeah. That was so Woody Allen. <laughs> This is insane. <laughs> yeah, that was my. That was you my. You know what though? I never <laughs> mentioned this to you, but because Kobe was like a first-time director, and we got to certain parts, we said, "Oh, but you know, this is what I wrote. Feel free to improvise." <clears throat> it, I I did sense. I never addressed it because I just thought it would make it more awkward. That if you were double thinking, overthinking what you wrote commenting on it then i wanted to reassure you it's well written mm -hmm. i don't i don't have to rewrite it i don't have to improvise it really is and it was so i i really did not in those instances take him up on it because i didn't think it was needed that's all yeah, no, Bring bringing up that it's his first feature again what is something about kobe as an actor's director and a leader that you really appreciated on this set that you're excited for more actors to get to experience oh in the future? my god so much i i he is now the reference point for how all directors need to be on set for me anyways he's he set the precedent um because i mean he is an actor he, he's come from that world well, he thinks he's an actor. so <laughs> Um, he tried to be an actor, and so he, no, he he just understands how to be. He just had a, he understands what the actor's process is. You know, he understands that while he, it's his job to worry about the image and the technical nature of the of the film, it's our job to worry about the psychology. So he's only talking to us about character, but at the same time, this man's leadership is phenomenal because he makes every department feel heard and seen while still holding on to his true vision which is so hard to balance yeah but it was kind of an I thought it was obnoxious, you know, because Kobe, he wanted to let you know he knew everyone's name hey, <laughs> hey Jinx, Smokes, and Bingo come on guys let's check our sound I would tease him though, you know, I would say like, oh Mr. First Time Director why don't you direct me you don't know what the fuck you're doing. You know, stuff like that to make it fun and abusive. So it was cool. What is the key for you for creating an environment like that on set? An environment where everybody feels like seen and like their input is valuable, but while you never lose control of your personal creative vision for the film? Yeah, well, it's, uh, I, I mean, the it, it's a film, in, in many ways, it's a film about people who aren't always seen being seen. Right, um, it's a film about background characters stepping forward and having their moment in the sun. Black characters who might have been sidelined um, being being allowed to come forward and have their moment. And if you're telling a story like that, and it's it's consistent with your values, it's weird if you're like shitty to a PA. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying like it's like that doesn't that doesn't really make sense, right? So so beyond it just being you know a, a reflection of my values, I, I, it is quite selfish about the work, you know, because I, I do have a obviously a really clear vision for what the film is and what the texture of it is and what the performances are in in many cases and what all the shots look like in in, in many cases. But but the way it's a, it's a process. Think about the way you 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 get to that, you know, and and to me what I'm always trying to do is um, uh, make people freer to do great work. So on another movie it, where, where that message, where it's not that message, you're going to be an asshole and be mean to everyone. Oh, oh yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah, this is just specific to this piece. You know, I'm, I'm going to be a monster later. You know? uh, but but I've been, I mean, I did start my career as an actor and so I've been on a lot of sets and I've, you, you can watch, you can, on certain sets you watch people, <laughs> you watch people, you watch people shrink, you know, and you watch people get smaller because, um, um, because of the, the leadership and because of the the texture and and to me it's like you just want people to get bigger and more expansive and braver because no matter how how clear a vision I have for it I'm, I'm one of my favorite things is when someone beats my idea when like I, I'm like I have a, a way I think this particular scene should go but then just as well let's let's what if we try it this way and the real tragedy is when the justice of the world stops saying well what if we try it this way because you just might miss the best version of the scene you know Have it's you, also uh, wait, i just want to sing his praises a little bit more he see i i'm sorry go ahead 
He's going to do it one more time. No, I'm not. <laughs> what Kobe I just does... was going... I'm sorry. That's my bad. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> what Kobe does so we, well... We spent some time together. <laughs> what Kobe does so well is that he... Um, he he organizes what's going to happen during the shoot. He's so well organized uh, and he allows to, like uh, he, he um, allots time for experimentation. So every single department, um, like when they have an idea and, and he, he sees a route of it, he sees like value in it. He's going to try it. He's going to experiment with it. And not all the time, it does, uh, like sometimes it doesn't work. You good? I just like slight case of COVID, but go ahead. <laughs> sometimes it doesn't work you know but sometimes it's like it's like what he says it beats his idea it beats his original idea but i I think like when you have someone who is is so open to trying things and experimenting like you don't feel as bad if it if it doesn't work out in the end if it gets cut or or whatever because you feel respected because you feel like you were hired for a reason because you're trusted as an artist you know um and that's why it was one of the most well-oiled films i've ever been on like oiled like like well oiled machines. No, like, I just I'm thinking I wasn't really. In the, I'm sorry. And I have Tourette's. Stop. <laughs> I don't even know what I was saying. Oh, it worked. Anyway. It was a well oiled machine. It was a well oiled machine. It was a well oiled machine. <laughs> but why is it so sexual? Like you know, it was oiled and massaged. It was lubricated. You know? And when he was aroused, I mean, intellectually, uh, it helped us achieve our climactic acting moments, if you know what I mean. Yeah, Yeah, okay then. That's right. I mean, filmmaking is sexy. I get it. I get it. (laughs) It ain't that sexy. Uh, But I have been on hostile sets. Have you? In which it's run more like a mutinous Yes. Battleship. Yes. Where literally the crew is like, they're either going to set up the shot or beat your ass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's no fun. That is no fun. That's when I switch into a survival mode yeah, yeah, yeah. and cool. just let me do my thing, get in, get out of here as quick as I can. Yeah, yeah. Which most of the days, that's really what it was like with boop. <laughs> I called him Black Stalin, yeah. if, that, <laughs> if that informs you. We've been asking a, a filmio inspired question, and I feel like it does lean into a lot of what you've been describing. So, like I said at the beginning, filmio is a company that's all about putting creative control in the hands of the creators, which I think is a very important thing that this industry needs more of. Whether it's on this film or anything else you've worked on, can you give me an example of a time when someone gave you creative control when you didn't expect to get it? On this on film. this film, anything or no, anything I, in the I'm past. No, I'm saying on this oh, film, like I this is the, this is the most creative control I've had. Um, I, I'm I'm a control freak, and being an act uh, being an actor is not really um, the job yes. for that because you don't. At the end of the day, um, at least being a film actor, you don't get to control your performance. It's all in the edit. It's all in the hands of the director. Um, and I remember in early in my career, I used to do um, every take the same way, so I had some like at, like. Mm-hmm grasp of like this is mine like it's my performance you know and i and i learned that that ultimately makes the performance stale you know and you have to trust your um your captain but i I had never experienced so uh, like collaboration like this you know and at times i had to like check myself because i'm like but kobe this is your movie and this is your (laughs) you know because he would he would often want to hear my ideas you know about like casting and about lines and about um story beats and you know he would give me so much freedom to improvise things and and uh like beef up moments like the lego scene and um I, i just i felt so um uh uh, equal to him um and that's a dangerous feeling uh because now i expect so much when i go on film sets i mean to be fair you should expect that of your collaborators <laughs> that's true oh, it's not as common as you think it's it's not common but it should uh, be yeah. it is it is Are shocking you, i yeah. guess i mean the most autonomy i would probably say in living color mm-hmm. um because keenan was from the beginning he said you can sit in your dressing room and wait for these writers to come up with sketches, but if you're not being served, write your own stuff. Yeah. Pitch your own stuff. Uh, come to me with these ideas. That's how you will get the most from this show. 
So that's probably the last time where I really uh, felt that much autonomy. Mm -hmm. And I personally, as an actor, I don't like coming in because I've been in that situation where it's like, you know, the protagonist gets on an elevator, enter David, and he's going to be funny. Yeah. I'm like, dude, give me some lines. <laughs> you know what you do, man. Just come up with some stuff. And you're like, mm, I want a structure. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Want to take us home with this one? Uh, yeah, for me, I th I think it's it's this piece too. I you know it's it's a, a piece that is incredibly specific to my experience, right? And uh, that experience is in incredibly black, and it is very particularly black. It's not necessarily you know the way I've processed racism and the way I've responded to it, and my particular defense mechanisms in the face of it are not every other black person's, you know. And and because of that, I think it's a quite distinct black film. And um, I was have <laughs> at various points in my career, as you can imagine. Um, had uh, encountered racism in Hollywood. It's come up, um, but but you know, once I was with these producers at Sight Unseen and these uh, this distributor at Focus, it, they they were very supportive about just really listening to me. And 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 when I say hey, this is what this film is, this is what my experience is, uh, uh, it was uh, respected in a way that I feel very lucky to live right now. Because I, you know, I sometimes play a game with my black filmmaker friends of like, how long ago would this film have not been greenlit? <laughs> you know, is it like, is it three years? Is it five years? Is it ten I'd years? You know what I mean? It's like, ten, it's you know. I think about uh, my yeah, my yeah. career and how I I wouldn't have had a career like if I was acting in like the early two thousands. You know, like the roles that I played are so specific to the time periods that they were in. You know, um, so yeah, I think about that all the time. Yeah. Anyways. Mm -hmm. Beautiful answers all around. I have to let you go so you could celebrate your movie some more. So I'm going to say thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing your experience with us. And huge congratulations. Thanks so much, Jeff. Thank you. To everybody out there, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more from Sundance 2024. And thank you, Filmio.